Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful evening. Um, it is Saturday night. It's 9.15 p.m. on the Central Standard Time Zone where I'm located. I don't know where you guys are, but that's where I am. And I just got my son to bed and I was like laying in bed while he was going to sleep. My don't mind me as I put some things up here. And one of my subscribers who um, is always in my DMs, she was like, girl, Grace was online today and she was talking about your audio and she couldn't believe that MTV did not credit you. And I was like, oh yeah, they didn't. Now I mentioned that earlier this week and I was kind of like, meh. Meh, right? Now, Grace said that she thought it was odd because we saw the other outlets like the Ashley and Us Weekly who talked about the audio, but she didn't actually, the, the network didn't actually show the audio um, from my site, which is who released it. I was the first outlet that reported it. I was the one that was provided it. In fact, I'm going to share some more audio with you tonight. So hang on tight, some never before heard audio. I was provided more than 15 clips. I possess audio that has not even been released yet. And there's more audio that could be coming out. But here's the thing. During the time that all the audio was coming out, this is sort of what was going on. MTV was not kind of put their head in the sand and they were like, not going to address the situation. They were not going to look at it. The audio comes out and suddenly there's all this attention on Amber and um, this, like the cracks are starting to show and we're, we're seeing who this real girl is and we're finally seeing what's going on, right? And then Amber's online and rather than yelling, at Andrew or whoever she thinks leaks the audio, she screams at me on Instagram Lives like a lot of times, right? And in those Instagram Lives, she says that she's gonna sue me, she's gonna show up at my house, um, that I made her money, or she made me money. So she said, you made 10K, and that's a lot of money for you, girl, but that's not a lot of money for me, but I made you that money. And I don't know how she even like, came up with that number. She just sort of showed up and was like, I made you 10K. Um, she threatened to sue me. She said, I know where you live. Um, I don't even remember all the things that she said. There was a lot. She was unhinged there for a minute. And listen, I know if I had like an, a, an, uh, an outlet releasing stuff of me that was not becoming and <laughs> made me look terrible, I would be so frustrated right but at no time during that did she like did she like show remorse or look sad she was just flat angry and mtv showed a few of her instagram lives like going off the rails right um but they didn't really show the bulk of it and i was the outlet that was provided all of this audio and um so I know that in order to get the audio, MTV would have had to obtain it, obtain it. I mean, other sources put it out, but if they had to go to the source to get the audio, they would have had to be listening to my channel. MTV will credit the Ashley, Us Weekly, because these are outlets that will paint the girls in favorable light. They do. Ashley might go hard on some of the teen moms, but she rarely digs in the way that she probably could or should because Ashley has a relationship with MTV. It's pretty clear. They promote her blog on the channel, on the show. The girls are always watching it, almost like it's positioned there for you guys to see, like, go to Ashley. Ashley has all of the information, right? Because Ashley does have sources within the crew that give her feed information. But they don't credit bloggers like me who put out information. And I think the reason why isn't because they hate me, but it's because of what's on my channel. 
because not only did I have audio, but I want to show you something. I had this. Amber's nanny, Brianna, she came onto my channel and she actually talked about who the parent was and what Amber was doing. And I want to show you this. Around her son. So you're waking James up and then you're putting yeah. him to bed. Yeah, sometimes it's Andrew, like, he'll be already up with Andrew, and, like, Andrew, like I said, will take him before I would leave so he can, like, spend time with him before he went to bed. Yeah. But, um, if Andrew was busy, like, because he was busy a lot, he was the one doing all the cleaning, like, he took care of house, he took care of Amber, he took care of the dog, so, like, if he wasn't busy, like, he would be the one to do it, I would leave early, and he would. Okay, so this season, they want you to think that a Andrew had some master plan to take everything from her. But his, this nanny reached out to me outside of him. I confirmed that that was the nanny by asking him. She says, Andrew did everything. He took care of the house. He did the laundry. He was going shopping. He was running errands. He was taking care of James. And on top of that, he was taking care of Amber. And on top of that, Amber wasn't spending any time with her son. So it doesn't really fit their storyline of Amber being this amazing mom and only going to be going to a part-time mom. I want to show you something more. So he is like the houseman. Yeah, pretty much. And he was doing, um, I think, the stock market, right? Yeah, yeah, he did that a lot. And then doing errands and taking care of Am Amber. Yeah. Okay. Doing the grocery shopping and running to the bank, doing everything. So how involved in James's life during the time that you were there did would you say Am Amber was? I not really much at all. Like um, she would come downstairs or like after dinner when I was there, just like kind of talk to me, ask how James was doing, and she'd like give him a hug, talk to him for a little bit, but. Like I said, there were days, like, I wouldn't see her at all. I get there at night and leave at night, and, like, she wouldn't come see James, like, at all. That would happen very often. So there... Did you hear that? There were days that the nanny was there from 9 to 9. That not one time during that day that she was with that child did Amber come and interact with her son. For 12 hours. She also said that during... There were weeks where there were multiple days where Amber did not even see her son, period. Where she saw her for one hour. Yes, the Ashley does drag me on Twitter and it's because I called her out for not, Ashley sat on a story and I called her out for it. Ashley knew that she had punched Amber in the, that Amber had punched him in the face in August of 2017 or 2018. She knew because MTV told her. She knew that he had blood dripping down his face. She had confirmation from people telling her that this altercation occurred and that Amber had punched Andrew and Ashley didn't report it. I called her out on that. I said, why wouldn't you report that, Ashley? Any other outlet would report that. She was likely the only outlet that knew that at the time. She said to me, I didn't want to ruin her career. Do you think that's true? Do you think she didn't want to ruin her career? Or do you think MTV might have said, you don't get to talk about that, Ashley? Because I think Ashley gets kickbacks from MTV. Ashley denies it, but why else is Ashley constantly promoted by MTV? Ashley sat on that information. She knew that Amber had been hitting him for some time, and she never reported it. And now, because I called her out, she mocks me, she belittles me, she discredits me. She says, Katie, you're such a terrible reporter. You don't know the facts. You don't know anything, blah, blah, blah. She sends her sycophants half after me. 
I don't care. Don't go bully Ashley. I don't care. It's clear that MTV's got in her pocket. But here's the thing. I called her out an email and I said, Ashley, why would you do that? She got mad at me for like bringing a private conversation public. And I said, no. I value honesty and integrity. And if another journalist knows something and they're not reporting it, I think that's BS. And if you're protecting someone who already has a criminal history because you don't want to like ruin the, the career of someone, no. So here is the rest of that. There were entire days when you were there during his entire waking day, she would never even interact with him? Yeah. Did, she, did you ever ask her, like, um, um, why? No, because like she, like I said, she gets broken up to very easily and I like kind of try to stay away from asking her questions like that to upset her. Like even when I wouldn't see her three days, like I said, I wouldn't see her and like I'd be in the house like anxious myself just knowing she was there because she would either yell at Andrew or like just be in a bad mood at like something that happened and it would just give me anxiety. Like I feel like me, James and Andrew were all walking on eggshells with her, even when she wasn't around. So, okay. So you are like Did you hear that? So she's literally saying that Ash, that, that Amber is screaming, yelling, she's walking on Angel, she's provoked by anything, and she's always yelling at Andrew. Andrew could do nothing right, and she was screaming at everyone. I will, yes, the Ashley is a credible source for what, the narrative that MTV wants to put out for stuff. So if you want information about what's going on in filming as MTV tells it, go to the Ashley. I'm not going to report what, Ash, what MTV wants you to hear. I'm going to report the truth. And she clearly sat on information. You don't have to like the, you don't have to like me. I'm not, I'm not dog, dogging her. She has good information, but she sat on information and I'm not okay with that. Things seems okay, but as you get to know Amber, you start to have more anxiety and... Yeah. So, is she going off a lot? Like, are there outbursts that are frequent? Um, usually she would, like, go off on him when they would be trying to talk to his She'd come back and something would happen and they would, like, argue and tell me or go upstairs. And like I said, like, it was more of Amber, like, just getting mad at me. We'd just sit there and be like, okay, like, stop, or we're acting like this. Um, but yeah, it would happen quite often. Like I could hear her from upstairs in her room, like yelling at him and I'd be downstairs. And what about this, um, assertion that her very, um, enthusiastic fans state that, um, Andrew provokes her? I honestly, like, I never saw it and I was there a lot. So when they would fight and the time I was there, I don't know, like about the weekends and stuff. But when I would hear them argue, even when they were upstairs, I only heard her. But when she was around me, Andrew, he wouldn't really say anything. Like, she would get mad, she'd yell at him, and she'd he'd be like... So remember this... Poking, 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 poking... At him, and like, oh, they must go off, they must go off. They must go off. They must go off. It's because he's poking her. She literally just said, he just goes off for no reason. He just goes off for no reason. Okay, like, I did it, I'm sorry. Or he just wouldn't say anything, or he would just tell her, like, like quit acting like this, like, you're being ridiculous. And that's, like, the most he would do when it comes to, like, provoking her is just telling her, like, she's getting out of control or taking things. Was he raising his voice, too, or was he usually generally calm? He was generally calm. And, like, so there would be times where they'd be, like, she'd be going at him, like, and I would feel bad for him. And he would, like, yell at her, but he'd be like, kind of raise his voice just to like put out there like i'm like upset like stop okay okay so 
she's literally saying that, and I, I'm, that's done with that interview because I want to actually play you another clip because this is a clip that I got from a source, the same source that dropped all the other audio from Amber. And I want to play this for you because you guys have never heard this before because everyone was saying that he must provoke her. He has to be provoking her. Well, what if you just were driving? What if you were just driving your car and you took the wrong turn? What if you were driving in an area you are not familiar with because you didn't grow up there and you're lost and you can't drive the right direction? Why? What if this was how someone reacted at you for just taking the wrong turn? Because MTV is not crediting me because I have the real Amber. I have the Amber on this channel that they don't want you to know about. They want you to think she was there for her kid all the time, that she was waking up with them, that she was hanging out with them. They don't want you to see that interview with the nanny. And they don't want you to hear this. I know exactly what the fuck I said. So why are you saying that? Because I can. Because I did it. Another fucking day. Whoop. Oh. Another fucking day. Hey, Lord. We went for a Boring time. ass life. Hey. Thank you, God. I know I asked for him, right? Hey, we went for a drive and the first restaurant was closed and so I went to a Shut plan B. Shut up about the fucking restaurant. Well, look, I didn't know the GPS oh was going to take God. me to Main Street. Why like, are you the way you are? Hey, I'm just saying I'm sorry. That's it. Like, Nobody cares. Your sorries are sorries every day. I didn't know was gonna, you're going to be you so upset. You know me. You know me. Yeah, but I thought that like, you're I was hungry, having like, fun. And you turned into the oldest fucking I'm not, the old? Just because I wanted to get breakfast with no, you? No, because you're old, Andrew. Not you're wearing a fucking sweater right hey, now. That's to go to the bank. Like, oh, fuck out of here. Get out of here. So you go to the bank? Because you got me a sweater. Wow. She's mad at him because her life is boring and he's wearing a sweater. Like, seriously, you guys. Seriously, she's freaking out at him because they went on a drive. He wanted to go get food. Where they got food, there was a line. So then they turned to go to a new place and then she got mad at him. And she's angry at him, calling him an old man that wears a sweater. Imagine. Wow. Fucking cry right now. Maybe. One fucking thing I need. One thing. One fucking one thing. One thing. I wake up in the morning. All I wanted was one thing. A fucking drive. Maybe we're driving. I ask all the time. Like, it's like we're driving. Like, stupidity. Stupidness. People do this all the time. Yeah, I was having fun. Like, and, but then you're a dumbass. Then you turn into a fucking crowded ass brick area with a bunch of old people walking down the street. Yeah, Good job, I, Andrew. I, I, I Good know, fucking job, you dumb fucker. I didn't know it was you stupid take a fucking. Gotta hate That's you. That's the nearest restaurant. I'm sorry. Go to fucking Malibu, you cocksuckers. You fucking blood sucking fags. All you guys are what? Because he turned on a street that had old people on it. Are you kidding me? He turned on a street because there were old people, so he's a blood sucking cop sucker. But he's provoking her. I got more. This is 42 minutes, y'all. Fun sucking fucking money grubbing pieces of shit! Man, no fun, no nothing! Nothing! Down, no fucking fun, nothing! Drugs, fun. drugs, 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 drugs! Fuck off! You drugs? Like, what are they talking about? I... That's all you ever fucking did! Go Driving fuck yourself! I'm on a cup of coffee right now, man. Go like... fucking surf! Go to your 
stupid ass, boring ass bullshit. Boring motherfuckers. You bore the fuck out of me. Where would you have driven? All of your friends bore the hey, fuck out of me. Where would you have driven? You all bore me. Hey, you're in Zion's with us. Every single one. Again. She's mad because they're not driving where she wants to be driving. They're on a drive, but she doesn't want to be on this drive. But he took her on the drive that she asked for. Oh, yeah. You bore me. You bore me. for 42 minutes 42 minutes she berates him for taking a turn down the wrong road because her life is boring she didn't want to go that way she doesn't want to have this life she never wanted to have James she's hates him he's a piece of crap this was in I think May of 2019 So, I'm confused. He's literally not even fighting her. He's like, I love you. What? You're beautiful. He's provoking her? And anyone that asks, this is the part that drives me crazy about this. This whole narrative that's being played out right now by MTV. I can't believe he would record her. Because that's what Macy said. Don't do this. Taylor, don't do this. Macy. Macy, someone who has spoken out against DV, has a protective order against Ryan, is all, don't do this. Why would you not do this? You know that the national hotline for DV tells people to do what he's doing? Collect evidence. Get proof. Make sure that you have everything that you need, especially if you're thinking about leaving your spouse, especially if you have a child. So you have evidence for the custody case. So a judge knows that if this child is with this person, something could happen. They tell you to record. They tell you to do these things for your protection, for your children's protection, and in the event that something happens to you. How many times in the audio did we hear her threaten his life? What if something would have happened to him? She said to him, according to Andrew, multiple times, I could put you away and no one would find you and no one would know I did it. If you were receiving threats like that, would you record it? Would you? I would 
record it. And then Macy saying, well, he didn't try to help her. He did try to help her. <laughs> he drove her to her psychiatrist's appointment. He talked to her psychiatrist. He tried to talk. He tried to get her psychiatrist to realize that the medications that she was on were not high enough a dose for what her body weight was. He tried to say, you're a child psychiatrist. Why are you treating my adult girlfriend? That's right. Her psychiatrist is a child psychiatrist, putting her on child doses of medication. What? Also, he said, guess what? Amber never received an actual diagnosis of postpartum. I literally asked him that this week. Did she ever get that diagnosis when you guys were together? When she was dealing with all that? He said, nope. I said, was she treated for it? Nope. He told me she's never been treated for it. She didn't take medication for it. She's mad about a turn. What was her excuse when she went off on, on Farah? When she called Matt a creep. What was her excuse for going off on Chrissy on marriage boot camp when Jim Jones said that Reality TV is a fake hustle that you do to make money. And she went off and she was like, I am not fake. Y'all, we're seeing how fake she is. And I think the reason why MTV doesn't want you to come to my channel and didn't credit me is because they don't want you to hear this. They don't want your facade of the perfect Amber to be ruined. They want you to think, oh, Amber, poor Amber. Thank you, Amber. I'm sorry, Amber. I see a couple. Hold up. Thank you, um, Horses by Hula Chowden, for your super chat. I saw a couple. Um, can't wait to share this audio. MTV is an enabler. And then it says, Amber has been up to no good for a very, for every thankful, is up to, has been up to go good for every thankful those children are protected. Hey, Kate at MTV, how is helping your friend feel right now? I think I'll ask MTV about the credit. You know, you only have to see her on the Insta, how off her head she is. Here's the thing, MTV, don't credit me, fine. Use my copyrighted audio that I own and put it on your channel and don't credit the source because I have the inconvenient truth that you don't want your fans to see. Because in this entire season, MTV, you have not done one PSA for DV victims. Not one. Never has there been a hotline. You have never once shared the hotline. Which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to share it right now because you know what MTV doesn't want to do, does not MTV does not want to help you get help, but I do. I want you, if you are in a situation to get help.
There you go. If you need help and want to leave a DV relationship, please contact the hotline. Advocates are available 24-7 at 1-800-799-SAFE in more than 200 languages, and all calls are free and con oops, confidential. There you go. This is what you're missing, MTV. This is what you're missing. Not one time in this season have you shared this. In no other scenario would you ever do this if it was the roles were reversed. If Andrew would have done this to Amber, what do you think you would have done? You would have done this. You wouldn't have dragged him. You think because he's six foot, what, seven? He can't be hurt by her. Doesn't matter how tall you are if you have a machete or a gun. Height makes no difference when you have a weapon. So here's the truth. MTV doesn't want you to know about me because I have the info on Amber. I have the truth. And I'm also an advocate for Andrew. And I'll tell you something personally. I have gotten to know, I didn't get this audio from Andrew. This came from like, a, like his family or someone connected to his family. But here's the thing. I got to know Amber, Andrew, over the course of all of these months after all of this came out because he was just like, thank you, oh my gosh. We've become friends. And you know what Andrew always says? Thank you for being the one person who has put your head and your neck out for me. Thank you for being my angel and James's angel. Thank you for being there for us. Because I have had so much hate. And you guys wonder why I'm dragged all the time. It's because of this. It's because of Amber. She told her fans to go after me. And they do and they still do. They are in groups on Facebook. They are all over Twitter. She even sent Matt. Now, she might not have sent him directly, but Matt came to me to discredit me, to cause issues on this channel. They did all of these things to try to destroy my reputation. Ashley is trying to destroy my reputation constantly. Fine. But you know what? None of that matters. You guys can come at me. You can hate on me. But you know what right now? Like Andrew had a one person that like stuck their neck out for him. And as much hate I'm getting, I at least know that that audio getting out there helped a little boy stay safe. Who knows what would have happened if that audio never would have gotten out there? Who knows if James would have been able, like, if she would have been able to play her little fiddle to get into James's life again? You know who, you know who's doing amazing right now? James. And it's not because of Amber. And she can do these interviews on Us Weekly and be like, oh, he's so great. He, like, totally, um... He's like me. He loves music. Um, Amber, you see him three hours twice a week. And sometimes you see him for like eight hours. You haven't had him overnight since July. You don't take care of him primarily. And you have zero physical custody of your son. If he didn't want to give you any access to him, he could pull it at any time. So maybe instead of being like, my son is just like me, maybe you should thank your lucky effing stars that the guy that you think was going to take your house, because like, why? Why would he want your damn house in Indiana when he's from Malibu? 
That's ridiculous. You left him broke. You know that you're not paying the bills. That house is paid for. He pays the utilities. You don't tell anyone that. You don't tell anyone anything. Your house is paid for. Who pays the utilities, Amber? Tell us. It's not you. It's not you that's paying anything at that house. So technically on title, that's your house, but you're not paying for any of the upkeep right now at that house. Thank God your son has Andrew. And if you want to keep coming at me and being like, Katie, oh, don't be like, she's such a bitch. Man, I can't believe it. Dude, I would rather stick up for someone who had no platform, no voice, who had no one that believed him, who had no one he could confide in, who didn't know what was going on, who was up against a machine. I would rather stand by that person than Amber. And yes, he has a past. Yes, he has history. He has been so incredibly like honest about it. Do you guys know that all of his like arrests and all of that stuff that happened with him and other people was right after his father passed away? Have you lost a parent? My husband has. I know what grieving does. Grieving makes people make really bad choices. Grieving can make people get involved in drugs and alcohol. People can become addicted because they don't want to think. People can become irate and get angry and not act normal because they're grieving. But you know what? He took care of himself. He cut he got back, he got rid of all of the stuff in his life that was messy. He got help. And he moved on. And he got better. So when he met Amber and he saw this girl that wanted to get better, that was talking about her past and not wanting to be defined by her past, he felt connected. He thought, I know that. I just got through that. I got through it, so she can too. You know what I'll say about him? He's too naive to be methodical. Every single person says that Andrew is this narcissistic human being. You know what Andrew is? He is not narcissistic. Andrew is naive. Andrew is, uh, he has rose-colored glasses. So he sees the best in people even when he shouldn't. He believes in everyone's possibility of change. He is supportive. He is loving. He is kind. I talk to him a lot and he is never, <laughs> never a jerk. In fact, when I go through stuff, he offers me help. Who do you think is helping me with security cams? <laughs> So MTV is missing this. MTV doesn't credit me. MTV doesn't want you to know the truth. But you can only keep going with these storylines MTV before the public is done. And I don't give a crap about your show. Like you could go on with your show just fine and if you removed Amber. You could. There's enough crap on that show that you could carry it. There's no reason that she needs to be there. Janelle Easton is right. I don't have anything on my records. Janelle, Janelle Easton has zero felonies. Who has three felonies and is still on MTV Team Mom OG? And custody of no children. Who? Amber. Who got fired for doing legal adult entertainment, but still has custody of her daughter? Farah. Who got fired because her husband did something, but she didn't do something? Janelle. It is so hypocritical. 
And MTV doesn't care about the well-being of these people. They all will, they're so deluded, they think that MTV gives a crap. If talking to Mackenzie Edwards this week taught me nothing, and all of you guys are like, I can't believe you're believing Mackenzie Edwards. Listen, I don't care whether you like Mackenzie. I don't give a crap about her choices with Ryan. My purpose with that was like, MTV manipulates storylines. She flat out said, I had, I changed the date of this party for Macy and then Macy's on the show saying that she found out about it last minute. MTV is not selling you real TV. So you need to think about this, in my opinion. You need to think about this. Instead of hating on these characters and thinking you know who they are, you might not know who they are at all. You might not know them at all. You see a version, a scripted version of what MTV is showing you. And that scripted version is not the truth. MTV, and here's what I loved. Oh, do you guys watch the Grace Report? Do you watch her? Do you watch Grace? I love Grace. I haven't watched her in forever. Um, but my subscriber, um, I think she's in here. Where is she? Let me see her. I'm going to pop her up just so I can give her a shout out. Where are you? Sharon Tag MTV makes them accountable. So Harley, Harley, I love you. Harley sent me an email today or sent me a message on, and oh, y'all, can you please, please congratulate Harley? She just had a baby. She just had a baby. Please congratulate Harley. She had a baby, a little boy who is adorable. Harley was like, Grace from the Grace Report just shouted you out and was like, I can't believe MTV didn't credit her. I talked to Grace tonight. Grace, thank you so much for your support. You are amazing. And I was watching Grace's video where she actually shouted me out and it was a, it was like a, um, a recap of the, the last episode. And Grace has said, over and over and over again what I have been saying, that Macy is disappointing her on every single episode. She's called Amber, Andrew a narcissist. She has gone out of her way for not, you know, being at the birthday party for Jagger. She's like constantly like in the middle. She's like uh, said, don't do this. And it's like, thank you, Harley, <laughs> for telling me to watch that video. And Harley, by the way, <laughs> was pregnant this whole time and didn't even tell me. This girl is in my DMs all the time. This girl has been so supportive of me from day one has never doubted what I've said or done. And she didn't, I had no idea she was pregnant. So congratulations on your new baby. He is absolutely beautiful. And I am so glad that you are part of this channel. I love when two women support each other. And Grace said, Maybe you should sue MTV. <laughs> and that was all. Mm, maybe. But yeah, Grace is good people. And so is Sherelle of Sherelle's World. So you can be on YouTube and you can have competing blogs or vlogs and you can still support them. So Grace, um, I really liked her. If you missed her live tonight, I don't know if it's processed yet, but she talked about how disappointing Macy's been this season. And she's also she was also talking about how um, Kate is really frustrating her. And I feel like I see things the very same way as she does. Like, how are you going to be disappointed in this, or how are you gonna act like this, Macy? And then 
Kate, why are you getting, like, she made, Grace made this amazing point that I hadn't even thought about. She was talking about how Kate was so triggered by her behavior that she had to go see her psychiatrist, right? And she said, Caitlin, if you are so triggered, <laughs> if you are so triggered, if you are so triggered by this friend, maybe you need to evaluate why you're friends with this person. And maybe, just maybe, you need to think, girl, before you do something, before you get better, I'm gonna step away. And boo boo, when you are better and you've gone through it, come back to me. Because there's a difference in supporting and enabling. And when you just, blindly support someone and you don't hold them accountable, that's called enabling. So if my friend does something really crappy that I don't agree with, that is outside of my moral compass, and Grace also made another really great point. Caitlin's entire storyline up to this was how she is the product of a mother who hurt her the same way that Amber is hurting her child. So how is it that she can stand on this, I'm gonna support you, Amber, when it goes against everything of who she is because she is the product of a mother like Amber. What I really like about Grace is she remembers, like she remembers, like she's a hardcore fan, like she remembers the old, all those details. Lord, now you're trying to take cred for the audio. You might, you have mighty big cojones. Who released it? <laughs> Who released it? True Vixen, I'm just waiting. Tell me, who who released it? I'm sure you're one of those sock accounts in that group of that hates me. Who released it, True Vixen? Show me. I don't care about the money component of it. It's the fact that when you're a media outlet, when you're a blogger, when you're a blogger, they should credit the source. It's just what you do. <laughs> you credit where it comes from. Amber did not own that audio. It came from, Amber didn't have possession of that audio. So MTV did not get it. And even, yeah, exactly. Even, M even TMZ credited me. Are you sticking up for Ryan? No, I have never stuck up for Ryan. That has nothing to do with this app. I released it and then I gave some of it to TMZ, who in turn credited my channel. And I was on TMZ, you guys. You can see my picture on TMZ. Because once TMZ got a hold of it, Amber lost her mind. Amber flipped out. She accused me of selling it to TMZ. She was going to sue me. That was the whole thing. There's an amazing person that works at TMZ, Devin. He, you, he has been on, uh, he has been T on, on TMZ live. He's a super good guy, super nice guy. He's who I worked with at TMZ. He was the person that was like, yo, you know what? We'll just like, I said, listen, I have all of this stuff. I don't want to put it out because of the liability and the pressure that I'm getting from Amber because she's losing her mind. Can you take this from me and get it out? And they said, You've been sitting on this? How long have you had this? So for anyone questioning 
me being a bully, any other outlet was like clamoring to get this. Splash News was like begging to pay, um, begging me to sell it to them. And I was like, I'm not going to sell this to you because it wasn't about money. And we didn't sell it to TMZ. They took it from me and they credited me. She was so angry. That's what caused her to fire away on Instagram. And she was so angry. That's why she's not on Instagram anymore. Because of that audio. Her team pulled her off of the audio, off of Instagram. I've been saying this shit for so long. You literally have shit that's gold. Big deal stuff. Aw, thanks, Sarah. I have more audio of her. I mean, we could literally listen to this whole 42 minutes, and maybe we will another night. I also have another clip of her literally talking about selling the stuff you put in your nose that's from Colombia. I have a, let me look at what the clip is again. How long is that? It's from November of 2017. So before, maybe when she was just recently pregnant and it is, eight minutes and 43 seconds where she talks about her involvement with organizations that do illegal activity and selling products that are illegal and putting it up your nose. Eight minutes and 43 seconds of her admitting to pistol whipping or that she could pistol whip someone if she wanted to. Can I play that one? Let me see. Don't tell me you're going to take me out of a life. You can't take me out of something I'm not in, first of all. Okay. This is why... Do you guys want to hear it? Okay. So here's the... Ba here is the... Um, here is the sort of backstory. Andrew started... If you want the real scoop, Andrew started recording her because he found out that she had given someone $8,000 for booger sugar. And he was worried about their house getting, you know what happens, right? And he was worried for his life, for his safety, because the people that she was involved in were in groups that are does it make sense I'm not fucking in any life no I just don't know that world so it's scary there's no world I'm not in it just because you know people don't mean you're in the world like yeah I mean, you're talking about like, pe like people possibly coming and shooting up your house it scares the fuck out Listen. of me but they're not going to because I'm not fucking with it like that. If dude's in jail, cool. You're not fucking jailing and you're fucking with it. Whatever. It's not even my problem. Like, that he's already gone through enough shit. Listen, you don't know. I don't know. Just, he's already gone through enough shit. Like, I'm not even... It'd be the stupidest thing you can do. Like, you even said call him at jail. Like, what? Well, I don't know this shit, babe. Like, you... They record every phone call. Oh, you don't even want your name associated with somebody because if he did rat on you, then they wouldn't have something to be like, oh, well, obviously you know him. And I could be like, no, this is my fucking... I'm not like a kingpin-minded person. And neither am I. The drug world. Like, I deal with hippies and like... <laughs> but what does that have to do with... I don't deal with gangbangers, babe. It scares me. Cool, you come from L.A. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, I avoid the gangbangers. It scares me. Because <laughs> they'll flat off the handle. You want to go to a block party? Not really. I'm scared to. <laughs> like, I'll go there. Like, I'll go there with you. And like, I'd like to leave at like, a decent time because I don't like. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. Like, like the way that you hype it up. Anyway, like, the way you're never that... going to a block party. I already told Wayne that. Why? Because you're not. There's yeah. no reason. You're not. You're not a block party person. You're too good for that shit. 
I know I do good and everything with, when I did with the last shit, like buying all the stuff, the kids' stuff and all that. Yeah, I think they're awesome for doing that, but I'm not like bringing you in that life. I don't need you around them. There's no reason. Okay, but are you gonna like maintain that life? I don't maintain shit. Right. Do I look like I'm maintaining a life? No, I'm the no, whitest no. girl ever. I don't give a fuck. I'm just, I'm just friends. He's just a good guy that I just got along with, and he reminded me of some people, And but he was so much different. He was older, wiser, already been in jail and shit. He's like, he's done with that life. Yeah, he goes and gets the weed and shit for me, all that bullshit, but he don't do nothing. He don't sell anything. He doesn't, he goes and picks it up from his little bros. He doesn't sell the shit. You know what I mean? He's trying to do real shit. He owned a business when I met him. He was an OG, and OG is completely different than these little fuckers around today. These things around here today, they're all just a bunch of fucking idiots. Wayne was trying to tell you his hustle was making money. That's it. He wants to make money. And now he's making money the right way. That's how he wants to make money. He's already been through all that shit. You have nothing to worry about with them. I'm not in any life anymore, baby. I wasn't in it then. I was just crazy. I think that when you're like, or when you were thinking that you might have been like set up with like a sting operation, that just scared me. Yeah, they need things. more proof, baby. I'm too fucking smart for those dumb bitches. to me was did you hear that when they were gonna set you up for that sting operation and she said i'm too smart for that shit baby he is like the people i used to hang out with he's not this this very intelligent man he's, he is intelligent but he's not to me it's easier for them to think that I'm some little white girl that doesn't know shit yeah. than, than anything else. But, uh, yeah, I don't play around with that shit. Just like uh, if, uh, when Liz was staying over, it was just odd how she was texting me. So I had yeah. Wayne and that stay at the house. I'm not fucking stupid. No, I know. Like, honestly, like, your response, like, when you lost, like, the five grand over that deal, like, to not do anything about it, like, it was like such a relief. Because she lost five thousand dollars over a deal. Did you hear that? Five thousand dollars over a deal. Because you can't do anything about it. You, there's nothing you can do. What am I gonna have somebody pistol with? I'm like, no, not over five grand. Maybe if I was poor. Am I gonna have them pistol whip him? Like really poor, or I didn't have money. Yeah, I would be hurting, but. Oh my God. I mean, I, I have so much money that it's not a big deal that the five grand that I gave this guy for the stuff. I know my worth in life and I'm not gonna sit there and fucking do that. I'm like, there's no reason for that. If I wanted to, I could get a hold of mine right now and be like, I need you to do something for me. She literally said that if she wanted to get a hold of someone to do something for her, she has the sources. So this is why. So she lost five grand in a deal. And if she wanted something to be done for it, she has people that can do it for her. And it was in 2017. Yeah. This was before she would have been, yeah, she would have been pregnant with James. Yeah. So that's what he walked into with their relationship. And I have talked to multiple people in her life that confirm that there are people in her life that are involved with G-A-N-G-S's. And she hangs out with them. So, 
She's the real G, you guys. That's, yeah, that's the one I've been sitting on forever that I never released, but that's it. That's all I got. So, do it. You go out with it. This was from, I think that says it's from November of 2017. According to Andrew, she was using before she was uh, pregnant, and then she stopped while she was pregnant, and then she, Andrew said she was using again after she was pregnant. Again, those are all alleged. And he was worried about her getting into trouble legally, and physically, he was worried about people coming to their house and hurting them. He was worried about the kind of people that she was associating with. He is a kid from Malibu <laughs> that didn't grow up like this, doesn't have these kind of people with him. He was very much outside of his comfort zone. TMZ is going to love you. Um, I can't wait till the judge hears this. She didn't mention herself. Sounds like she was talking about Matt. She was not talking about Matt, actually. She was talking about herself. He recorded her for proof when it comes to going to court for James. He did what he was supposed to do, yes. Um, this is not going to sit well with her. Here's the thing, you guys. This is, I was talking to Sherelle from Sherelle's World. If someone's in the public figure and they're doing things that are not okay and they're claiming to be like this good person that's like reformed, because think about it, in 2017, she was still saying, I'm good. I'm better, you guys. I am not involved in that stuff. I went to jail. I am the real deal, you guys. But then she's making deals. Allegedly, I don't think this girl ever reformed. Why did he stay in the first place? She was pregnant. <laughs> and I think he just believed that she was, I, I think he believed what she was selling him. Her people are going to be so mad when they hear this. They might be. You are on top of it. Amber's going down. See, my goal here isn't to like bring her down, you guys. It's really not. It's it's not about like putting her in a position where she's somehow. It's it's telling you guys the person that you're seeing that is being paid fifty thousand dollars an episode allegedly isn't doing the right things. If any other show had someone like her. Do you think she would still be on The Real Housewives with this kind of crap? Do you think Andy Cohen would put up with this? No. So that's why MTV doesn't want you to know about me. That's why MTV doesn't. Yes, he would. Hell no, Andy would be like, bye, bitch. Yep. Andy wouldn't put up with that. No way in hell. And this is all evidence Andrew still gets hate. Imagine if Katie didn't release this info. There's stuff that hasn't been released yet. Think about that. There's a lot of stuff that hasn't been released. A lot. How much is Amber making per season? I was told that she's getting around $50,000 per episode. Now that's not confirmed. That's just what I was told. So four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a year.
There's a lot. But I'm done for the night. I'm tired. And I gotta go. But keep on keeping on. Make sure you check out my channel. I'm going to unlist this, just so you know, and I'm gonna re-upload it so that it'll be accessible to all of you because YouTube is not processing streams right now. And I am grateful for you guys to be here and I'm so thankful for your support. And I'm glad TMZ gave you credit at least. You're well, yes. Oh my God, Katie, Easter eggs are sitting, Easter eggs, what Easter eggs you are sitting on, come on it, it's easier. All right, first off, I am an atheist, but if you are a Christian, tomorrow is a big day for you, so I am not, it is not above me to wish those of my Christian friends um, a very happy Easter for tomorrow. I know it's going to be a difficult day because many of you um, go to church tomorrow and it's a really like it's a you know your savior has risen and so not being able to go to church on that day can be really weird and feel different and you know what like do something with your family tomorrow be with them spend time with them love on your kids if you have them make tomorrow just an amazing day we don't celebrate it but I did run into the Easter Bunny at Walmart and he happened to hand me a couple Jurassic World dinosaurs who happened to fall into the cart and he was all, give these to your son. And I was like, okay. So have a happy Easter. Um, watch church, stream it if you go. And if you don't celebrate Easter, have a good day tomorrow. All right, you guys. Bye.